we should be live. Uh, good morning and welcome, well, morning for me, hello, uh, and welcome to Live Coding. Today we're gonna be continuing to work, let me turn you off and you off, uh, we're gonna be continuing to work on our dialect bot. So if you haven't uh, been here before, uh, we are working on a project that will, shoop, turn you off, uh, ask you a bunch of questions and then um, do some machine learning, which is the part that we're going to do today, and uh, predict what um, place the United States has the closest uh, language usage to your current language usage. So it's based on the idea, um, it's actually based on the same data as the, the New York Times dialect quiz from uh, 2013, I believe, yep. Um, so if you haven't taken this before, it's really interesting. Even if you're not from the US, I think it's sort of uh, cool to learn about different dialect features of uh, uh, English in the US. And yeah, that's what we've been working on. A little sip of coffee. Mm. Oh, I have um, uh, coffee with chicory in it today, which is, um, uh, kind of a New Orleans thing in the United States, so uh, I was recently reminded of New Orleans and was like, oh yeah, I do want chicory coffee. Last week, um, we uh, got our hands on the data, by I, we, I mean me, um, which is generally provided by Bert Vox, thank you Bert, uh, and was collected by Bert Vox, and uh, the name of the second person is in the uh, Scott Golder in 2003. So this is, and this information is in the, the YouTube video description. Uh, so this uh, data is a little bit older, which might mean that it's not quite as um, correct now as it was in 2013, but hopefully we'll be fine. And then last week, so the data looks like, whoop, uh, oh, yep, uh, what's it, shift control enter? Yeah, um, it's been a while since I, I got to use our studio, so I'm learning, relearning all of my uh, shortcuts. All right, and it looks like we have uh, the wrong directory. I did just change the directory, so I'm not sure why it's different again. Good morning. I hope everybody has having a really good week. We're halfway through. Uh, dialect bot business end. There we go. All right. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Now this looks better. Uh, and now this should work because we are in the correct directory. Oh, I don't think I set this as the working directory. Yeah. Excellent, now this should work. Yeah, um, so this is a um, uh, tabular data spreadsheet, uh, and it is fairly large. So the Harvard Dialect Survey had 126 questions. Um, 125 questions, where two of the questions are, where are you from? Uh, and then there were about 47,000 people that filled it out. So it's a fairly large data set. Uh, and last week we went through and we didn't want to ask everybody 125 questions because uh, that's that's longer than I want to interact with a conversational assistant, um, at least for sort of like a fun quiz. Uh, uh, Dagma says, morning fellows, St. Louisiana. Oh, I'm not I'm not from uh, 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 Louisiana, but. Um, I did have a really wonderful summer there in undergraduate doing linguistic field work with the um, Kawasabi tribe, uh, which is in um, sort of western Louisiana. Um, really had a wonderful time, genuinely lovely people. Um, it was real hot, <laughs> uh, but it was nice. Mm. And... I got off track again. Uh, uh, she says, can you direct me to the video where entity interaction, extraction and sentence classification can be done easily with Raza? So that will be done 
um, sort of automatically. Uh, if what you want is just the uh, intent classification, so looking at sentence being like, this person saying hello, um, we should say hello back maybe, and then picking out the entities, then you're going to want to use the part of Raza called Raza NLU for natural language understanding. Um, and if you just search for Raza NLU, that should point you to that part of the library. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, and I, uh, mm, I think one of the master class videos uh, also covers that in, in more detail. So really big data frame, lots of data. Um, we don't want to ask people 126 questions. So the New York Times dialect quiz uh, asked 125 questions. Nope. 25 questions. Uh, and what we did last week was we went through and we um, actually by hand got for each of the questions, the text of the questions, the, um, the question key. So in the, let's look at the head of the data here. So in the uh, data set itself, you can see that each column is a question. Uh, and the questions are not the text of the questions, they are Q001, Q002, et cetera, all the way to Q124, I think. Um, and then the first three columns are the um, participant ID, the city, the state, and the zip that they provided when they filled out the um, dialect quiz. So uh, we needed to go through and figure out which of these questions uh, in, the, in the key represented which like actual question that we want to ask a person. Um, so that's what we did. So Q050 is how would you address a group of two or more people? And then this bit here at the end where I have multiple options with little um, uh, semicolons between them, these are all of the possible answers. So if you look down here, you'll see, can you see my mouse? I can't see my mouse, but I think that's because my preview is very small. Um, you can see that for each question, instead of having text answers, there's numeric answers. Um, so this is uh, zero through seven. Uh, and if we want to know what language use each of these answers corresponds to, we need some sort of key. And that's what this key is. So for Q050, uh, the options are you all, use, use, you lot, you guys, you and yins, you other, uh, and then y'all. And that's the order that they were presented with in the quiz. So hopefully we should get a one to one correspondence. And if we don't, our live is going to be much harder. So what I want to do today is take this uh, CSV that we did by hand last week uh, and this really large data file and create a much smaller data set. Uh, uh, Sagar says, sorry, it's not related to this lecture. Can you please tell me in Raza X when we archive any model where it goes? I don't know. Um, I would ask on the forums. Uh, because we monitor them pretty closely and uh, someone who does know will almost certainly be able to answer it. Um, and the forums are, I'm getting the uh, link to that. Here you go. They are forum.raza.com. Um, and I would uh, highly recommend if you have any questions that this is a really nice place to get them answered. So, the thing that I want out today is I want a smaller data frame where we have, for each user, this information is going to be the same. We have only some of the questions, so we're going to have 19 different questions. Um, and then for each question, instead of this 0722, we'll have the text of that person's answer. Um, yep, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to call this data key. So this is the um, uh, this is the question key that we spent last week writing by hand. Read underscore CSV. Um, and then it is question key is what we called it. There we go. Oh, and we don't need that. 
Excellent. Uh, two parsing failures. Row 15, column delimiter, quote, D question C. All right, let's check out row 15 real quick. Because uh, again, I did put this by together by hand, so it's definitely possible. Uh, that looks right to me. Let's just check out the head of data key. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That looks right to me. Uh, let's look at the uh, all of the columns of row 15. Row column, sorry, all of the columns of row 15. And you know row comes before column because it's RC cola, not CR cola. Uh, so Gar says, I already asked on the forum, but didn't get any response till now. Hmm. Um, yeah, I can uh, uh, gently nudge uh, whoever was, was tagged on that to, um, to take a look. And I think we try to get to questions within three days. So we'll do our best. And some water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kitty corner. Um, interesting. What does 14 look like? First syllable, boy, a lot of boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's fine. I think that it's throwing errors because of the single quotes. Single. Single quotes in here. Uh, and Sam, oh, thank you. Uh, so Sam is uh, one of the, the Raza team members, says uh, it just gets deleted, unfortunately. So uh, there's your answer. Um, OK, so I think we are actually good to go despite the parsing warnings. I think uh, um, it's just sort of been handled for us, which is nice. All right, uh, we don't actually need any of that sort of like initial data exploration. So what are we doing? First, we need to, mm -hmm. uh, I'm using pipes, which are uh, part of the tidyverse library here. It's part of Migrator, I think. Uh, tidyverse is a meta package that has a lot of smaller packages in it. Oh, all right, so we want to get the first three cotton, for the first one, I don't think it matters if we just, yeah. Yeah, okay, so what I'm thinking is my two options would be to take the first three columns and then filter the columns, filter the remaining columns based on um, the, whether or not the question key is in this row of question keys. Uh, actually, if I get rid of this and reopen it, will we see it as a, a proper CSV? No. Um, so whether or not the column is something like Q005, sorry, Q050, Q080. Uh, and I think I'm going to do that and handle just the questions and then later go back and get the first three columns that have the participant information in them. So let's do that. Uh, so if we want just rows, then we want to select because it uses SQL syntax. Um, and then we want to select anything in uh, data key. And then we want everything in the row question number. So I'm just going to really quickly make sure. Yep, OK, excellent. That's the format that we want. Uh, do I need to say column M? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the heads. I'm not doing this with this whole 47,000 row. Uh, I think it needs to be select where. It's been a second since I've done this. Uh, actually, maybe I don't need to do any of this. Maybe I can just do sa. 50, 28, 80, 66. Okay, yeah, no, it was just, it's just much easier than I needed it, than I was trying to make it. Okay, 
Excellent. So these are the questions that we are answering. We are asking our users. Uh, we have six rows because I've selected the top six rows using heads, so we're not using like a huge, big, uh, chunky thing. And then we have uh, 19 columns, which makes sense because we have 19 questions and the first, col the first row is the header. Fantastic. Good to go so far. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is I want to take each of these uh, little pieces here that's like 44788 uh, and turn that into uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 should be you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, uh, other, y'all, y'all should be the text that I see in here. Uh, right now, this is being treated as a single string. You see that we've delimited it here with semicolons so that we don't mess up our um, comma delimitation in our file. Um, what's the easiest way to map from here to there? Okay. So we can't just take all of these and turn them into a data frame because you, because you can see here we have eight options, here we have two options. So because we have a different number in each row, um, we can't treat that as a tabular data set. So we're going to need to use a list, which is sort of a general purpose uh, data structure in R. And a list can contain anything, including um, vectors of varying lengths. So I think what I want to go through is I want to go through this, separate these so that I can index into here. And this will be item one, our index is from one, item two, item two, item three, item four, and so on. Uh, I want to leave this in a state where I can uh, come back to it and know what I was doing. <sighs> How do we do that? Time for some Googling. Tidyverse get lists from single cell, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh. Let's see, unnest a list column. If you have a list column, that makes each element uh, of the list its own row. Oh, interesting. Maybe I do want it to be a list column. So tidyverse, uh, list column. I believe you can have list columns in, uh, uh, recode values of a list column. Is this what I'm looking for? I'm trying to recode all values that are null to NA. Mm. Uh, if you want to inspect the individual list values, you need to inspect to recode the elements. Uh, all right, not, not exactly what I was looking for. Let's start by just checking out the data set and see if we can parse it. Uh, so the thing that we're looking for is data key and then responses. Mm. So what we want to do is we want to con convert a vector, convert delimited vector to uh, convert, sorry, convert a delimited string to a vector is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, also I want to do that in R. Uh, let's see. Grok base. Never heard of this site before. Uh, how do I convert the text ABC into a three element character vector? That is what I'm looking for. Uh, unlist string split. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I think I just need to use string split. 
it's all coming back to me. It's been a minute since I've done a lot in R. All right, so let's try uh, looking at the first one and then doing string. <laughs> Uh, vectorized over string and pattern, vectorized over string and pattern. Let's try that. So uh, the recommendation there was string split with no underscore. Um, in general, functions with underscores in them are part of the tidyverse, and functions without underscores are the equivalents in um, base R, uh, and I have a preference for the tidyverse. Oh, and I think I'm going to need to pass in a pattern, which we have used semicolon for. What if, what if I want to do it? What if I want to do it over all of them, huh? First of all, remember you're in the terminal. Easy, easy peasy. This is why I love R. This would be hours of futzing in Python, which, to be fair, I am less familiar with. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's. Uh, data key, what should I call? Uh, what should I call the new, new column I create? Uh, data resp list. I think that should work. Uh, and then I want to make sure that I actually assign that back to the doo -doo. Mm -hmm. uh, I may want to make sure that I actually assign it back to the uh, data frame so that I'm adding a uh... all right and then if we look at uh, the head of data key we should see that the fourth column is uh, a list. Excellent. So we can see the data type is list. We succeeded in doing that. Uh, and that this one has nine elements. This one has two elements. This one has nine elements. This one has eight elements, etc. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. So now what we need to do is for each question, we need to go into the list and then for each um, Uh, for each item in the, doop, 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 for each item in our, uh, in our row, use that as an index to go get the thing that we want. And it looks like this is also indexing from one because that's how humans count. I feel, I don't like zero indexing. Uh, I will fight you on this. Uh, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't need to futz at all with it. It should just sort of work. And I'm saying for a lot, which makes it sound like I'm going to write a loop, but I'm not going to write a loop because R, uh, in R, everything is a uh, vector with an index. Uh, if you have a, a single character, it is a vector of length one. So uh, loops are much less time efficient and memory efficient than um, uh, vectorized operations in almost all cases. It's an interesting language. Okay, how am I going to do that? <laughs> so we've gotten our So we've gotten our data into a data frame with a list. So we should be able to do something like data key whoop, and then data response list and then look at the first item and then look at the first item. Uh, it's been a while since I've worked with this list syntax. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, so we, what we're doing here is we're looking in the data key, data frame, uh, and then we are looking at the. Um, the list representation, and then we're looking in the first row, so the first list in our list of lists, and then the first item, and then the second item. Um, 
So this is this you all one, and then the first option would be you all, and so on and so forth. So how are we going to make this work a little bit more elegantly? <laughs> Back to Google. Uh, what do I want to search for? I want to... R, <laughs> first of all, uh, otherwise I'm going to get irrelevant results. I want to uh, use, uh, 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 get list items using cell contents as index, I guess is what I'm looking for. Uh, selecting elements from a list, list tutorials, using contents of a cell to learn, uh, define a range for V lookup. That's an Excel thing. That's not R at all. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's, you know what? Let's just do that thing where we try it and uh, sometimes it works. Uh, Fresh Dresh on Twitch says, hello, do you find that you are more slash less efficient talking through your thought processes on stream or does it seem relatively unchanged? Um, I think when I'm coding on my own, I'm more likely to just try things. <laughs> um, doing things on stream is more like pair programming, I would say, because I'm trying to describe what I'm doing. So I tend to have fewer weird bugs, but my overall um, speed of coding is slower. I would say like, a, a quarter, <laughs> a quarter the speed, roughly. What if we did, okay, data key, uh, and let's look just at the first one. And then to get things out, we want data original. And then we want from the, um, the first one, right? No, uh, the first one for us is actually question 50, I think. I don't know why it scrolled. All right, let's see, let's see how this works. Y'all, it just works. It just works. I love R so much. Um, fantastic. Uh, Fresh Dress says, I totally buy that. That was my expectation as well. It requires less passes because it's a more thorough approach, but each pass takes longer. Thank you for your answer. You're very welcome. Uh, but of course, other people may have, uh, may have different experiences. Okay. Uh, so that worked fantastically. I'm very pleased, uh, very straightforward. So what we want to do now is we want to do this for each of our columns. We might got to do this as a, no, no, we can do it with vectors. We can do it with vectors. Um, so instead of saying one here, we want to get, all right, uh, we're probably gonna have to write a function for this. Oop. Uh, uh, data original Q50. So this piece of information is the answers. Uh, I'm going to say not users, participant. Okay, so this is the participant answers, right? Uh, and then we need to, this one, instead of just specifying that it's one, it should be, so it's a little bit weird because the lists are as a column. So the thing that's a little bit funky here is that in our data set, the big data set, each answer is a, each question is a column. In our little question key, 
each question is a row. So we're sort of like matching a row and a column together, which is what just makes it a little bit a little, a little bit funky. Um, how are we doing on time? We may or may not get to the machine learning part today. We'll see. Actually, I don't think I have anything planned after this. I might just keep going. Okay, so um, this one is the participant answers, which is based on this question. So the other thing that we need to know is we need to know the number of the row in the data key where, uh, okay. Um, so data key, and then we wanna know the question number equals equals, uh, we're gonna need a new thing called target question. I know I'm doing this in a very weird order. Stick with me. Okay. Da -da. Da -da. Uh, so we need where the question number equals equals target question. Uh, and that should. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, this is not a variable. This is in text. So. Excellent, and now I want uh, what would we what would we call this? We'd call this question row. Okay, so and we should be able to do this because that should be oh, ah. Can we do that? Let's find out. Let's just, let's just give it a try. I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah. All right, um, so the problem is unknown or uninitialized column target. Qu oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta do that closure thing. Okay. Um, so what am, I, what am I trying to do? I am trying to Uh, pass column name as variable in R. I've Googled this before. Uh, pass the name of a variable to a function. Uh, passing a data frame name as a variable to a function. Dynamic column variable names using standard evaluation functions. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Uh, so our bloggers is a, um, oh, that's a little small for y'all, huh? Uh, is a sort of meta blog. It collects blog posts from all over about R. Okay, yeah, so this is the, uh, <clears throat> this is the problem that I'm running into is that I'm passing in a string and it's expecting a uh, reference to an object that it knows about, but it will only know about the object once it's looking inside the data frame. And we want to figure out what it is before we look inside the data frame. So non-standard evaluation can't easily use dynamic arguments as you could by using strings. I know I'm, shoo. Um, programmatic way to summarize. Group one variable, string, text, sharp summary. Mean miles per hour. All right, all right, all right. Hmm. All right, so I think we're going to have to go back to using purely tidyverse to fix this. Um, Dyson one says, how is Gustav? Good. Uh, I haven't, uh, I mean, I've, I've peeked in his cage to make sure everything looks good, but I haven't actually, um, taken him out this morning because I think the reason that I've been so sniffy on stream, uh, I think I'm, I think I got an allergy to his dander. Um, it's not, it's not severe, but I've noticed that it's worse in the morning after he's been running all night and it's worse when I take him out of his cage and it's worse when I clean his cage. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to 
uh, I should get a little air purifier and like keep it right by him and see if that helps. But anyway, uh, okay, so what we want to do is we want to filter, I think, actually. Uh, so we want to select, which gets us a column. So we want our data responses in a list. Uh, also, first you need to say select. Uh, and then we take the output of that. So now we just have one column. And then we want to filter uh, ILTER. And I've been led to understand that I can do this using an underscore. Filter is deprecated. Please use regular filter instead. Okay. Uh, all right, excellent. Okay, so that does actually work. So that has gotten us. So at this point, question row is a, um, question row is a, does not need to be a variable actually. Uh, so question row is a uh, Boolean vector, and we are using that to filter only the rows where it matches the uh, value. Okay, excellent. And from there, we want to <sighs> What's that look like? It should just be a list. Okay, it's a tibble, one by one, data first. Okay, so this is question row. So let's call this list key and assign that. Uh, so we should be able to do like so now. No, 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 this is replacing all of this. So, and at that point we should only have one. Yes, at that point we should only have a data frame. A table is a class of data frame. We should have a data frame that's one by one that contains a list. So we should say, hey, look in the first list because there's only one and then give me the participant answers. Oh yeah. First, it needs to exist. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. All right. What if I get rid of this? Okay, so this one worked. Data key, data response list, and then getting into it. So we might actually be able to, in theory we can, hmm, hmm. Okay, uh, so let's play around with this list key object for a little while. Uh, what does the first one look like? All right, and then if we, hmm. All right, all right, all right, all right, right. So I think we need to do stay do need to say one. All right, and then participant answers. Hmm. So what's the difference between indexing in directly and creating another object that is causing us? Uh, aha, 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 aha. Okay, uh, so I think the problem here is that we need to do se select underscore t 
target question. Could be wrong. Let's find out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Select is deprecated. Uh, using an external vector in selections is ambiguous. Use all of target question instead of target question to silence this message. Invalid subscript type list. All right, what does participant answers look like? Hmm. Hmm. Um, Fresh Dress says, uh, what is your motivation for cleaning data in R and then modeling in Python? Why not clean the data in Python as well? Um, so my biggest reason there is that for tabular data manipulation, the R tool set um, is just much richer. So pandas in Python, which is a library for handling data frames, um, is a re-implementation of some of the base R functionality, but there's a really rich data cleaning, data manipulation ecosystem. I like the tidyverse, which is a meta, uh, a set of meta packages. Uh, I love the website. Uh, which is a meta package which collects a lot of um, really, really, in my opinion, well-designed, easy-to-use functions together. Um, so the same data cleaning, to get where we have gotten right now in Pandas, would have taken me, uh, I don't know, probably six times as long. <laughs> and partially that's just because um, I am slower at Pandas, and partially that is because uh, it does not have as rich of a, an ecosystem around it. Hopefully that answers your question. Mm. Okay. Error in list key invalid subscript type list. Don't know what that means. Is this a list? Do I need to unlist it? Will that work? Uh, hi, Joven. Robbie says data.table is nice. Uh, yeah, data.table is also another, um, it's sort of similar to the, the R, the tidyverse ecosystem in R. Um, it's focused more on um, handling really large data very quickly rather than um, these sort of like nice user experience. And not to say that it's a bad user experience, but that's not sort of the primary focus of the, of the package packages. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Fresh Trust says, interesting. Thanks for the answer. I'm one of the lucky few who only has to answer analyze data sets I create. So they basically never need substantial cleaning. Oh, that's the dream, man. Uh, that is the dream. Also, I'm thinking, so there's the problem here is definitely my, all right, what is the, data type here, participant answers. Uh, okay, so this is still a data frame. And I think I want it to be a vector. Sorry, I'll try to stop making uh, weird sounds. Uh, so I think the problem here is that I'm looking for a vector and instead I have a data frame. And even though the data frame only has one vector in it, it's not automatically being used. Can I say, this is not gonna work. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, um, hmm. 
from here? Can I? His character into is not true. <laughs> okay, so I think what it's looking for here is a name. <laughs> don't 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 overwrite a uh, uh, built in. <laughs> How about some key smash? All right, uh, is key smash in our namespace now? Don't think so. Um. All right, let's just check out the head of producing answers. What does this look like now? Ah. 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 I see. It has renamed the column, so we can call this question. And then down here, we can call this question because that is now the name and not a random string. Okay, uh, so we have, let's, let's take a look at list key. Actually, it's also over here. Uh, so list key, which is a, uh, a vector of length one. Uh, sorry, it's a vector. Is it a vector? Oh, is that our problem? Hmm. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. What if I unlist this? All right, yeah, I think that's what I need to do actually. So I don't need the str. Str just tells you the uh, the data structure of the object that you are querying about. Okay, so uh, let's try uh, unlisting this. Actually, no, uh, let's do the unlisting here and see if this works. Okay, that's better. So it's given it out, given us out a vector, uh, which of uh, the same length as the uh, participant questions answer. So that is what we want. So list key is now, huh? Hmm. 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 All right. So I think we actually have a different problem here. Uh, all right. So list key and then key, and then we need to unlist it. All right, so what does this key look like now? Oh, I don't think I actually ran this. Okay, so what does this key look like now? Empty. <laughs> okay. Uh, great. <laughs> really good. Uh, yeah. So let's try just this, just this actually. So this should select a single row, excellent. And this should get just one of the items in the row, yes. And 
Okay, so I want to take this item, uh, this item in a list, and sorry, there's a list, it's in a data frame of one by one. I want to extract single cell, extract single cell from data frame R. That is what I want. Oh, my rice is done. Uh, extract the entire row, extract the entire column. Uh, oh, data camp, no thank you. Uh, okay, so I guess what I can do is, uh, is I can do list key and then the first one and then unlist that, I believe will get me what I'm looking for. Yeah, excellent. Okay, and then from there, I should be able to say, hey, I want to use that as, nope, that didn't work. Beans. <laughs> Noted. So the overall approach should work. That's not the problem. The problem is with the participant answers dollar sign question. So this is in the participant answers data frame, the question column. So what does that look like? Oh, it's a character. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It is not uh, numeric. Uh, actually, I can do that up here. What is participant answers at this point? Yeah, okay, so you can see here that the data type is character, and I actually want it to be a number. Um, error in function list k value, list object cannot be coerced to type double. What if I do it here? Will this work? So this should be a character vector. I want to treat it as a numeric vector. Yeah, okay, that works. Uh, that one there is not going to work. So, uh, I'm going to call this index of answers. I'm going to call this uh, answer key. And then we can do something that hopefully will be a little bit easier to read. We should be able to do answer key index of answers. Oh, first let's, yeah, okay, excellent. Uh, it works. Uh, uh, Savam uh, says, hey, remember me? I gave you the Alexa connector. I do, uh, distinctly from the forums. Thank you, much appreciated. Um, also, uh, we're working on a, a tutorial. It's gonna be a little bit, a little bit shorter. Um, and, uh, The uh, thing that I found really helpful that I'm sure you already knew about, but anyone else might, other people might not, is uh, in the Alexa skills kit, there is a uh, reference for the request and response JSON uh, that made my life much better once I found it. Um, so yeah, thank you for your assistance. Uh, all right, where were we? So, excellent. So now we have, uh, Okay, so th and I think right now we have everything we need to turn this into a function. Uh, so I wanna call this 
get uh, convert answers to text. Uh, it is a function and it takes as the input target question. Target question. Curly braces. So now uh, when we do convert, nope. Convert and. I should fix that typo, huh? Uh, and then we give it Q050. We should, we're gonna get nothing out because we never returned anything. All right, now we should get out, fantastic, our uh, list of answers. Uh, excellent, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> uh, it wasn't that bad, it wasn't that bad. Um, so let's give this uh, a couple of comments just so people know what we're doing and by people I mean me um, select the participant answers numeric uh, select answer key for question question and that's gonna be text uh, and then uh, doop. Doop. Uh, and then we can uh, get corresponding answer. Um, we are going to have to turn these back into uh, numeric answers at some point, uh, but that's not what the humans are going to say. Unless, uh, mm, hmm, I guess we could do them as buttons, right? But then that completely defeats the purpose of doing it as a voice skill in the first place or doing it as a chatbot in the first place because the point is that we're trying to avoid like eliciting people to give us specific answers. Um, so. Okay, so um, we have this function that will take in the text and give us uh, the, uh, it'll give us the answers back out and what we want to do now that we've selected all of the questions that we want. So let's, uh, let's give ourselves let's stick these down there. Uh, so what we want to do now is apply it. So can I do mutate all? Is that a thing? Mutate multiple columns, all right. Uh, Dplyr is part of the tidyverse, as you probably can't see, because it's a little, a little on the small side. Uh, all right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so mutate some of them. Mutate at, mutate at, mutate if, mutate if, mutate if, mutate if. I want to mutate all. Is that not an option? Underscore all affects every variable. Okay, so what I want to do now is for each question, I want to get the name of the column, right? Yeah, because we have, if we look at, <laughs> that's going to be a lot of scrolling. Um, so if we look at uh, the head of data original, 
uh, you can see that the name of the column is what we want to pass in as a text variable to our function convert ants to text. So how do we do that? Convert column name to uh, get column name, get column pass column name to function in R. Uh, whoop, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, data frame columns as arguments to dplyr functions. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sorry, no, I'm just reading at this point. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the problem that we're going to run into. Uh, ta, ta, ta. No, we're not going to run into it. Um, okay, so this is if we're trying to manipulate columns within the function, and I think we should be good there. Um... Can I pass in a couple of vectors and see what I get out? Uh, what's another one that we have that we're interested in? Um, let's just do Q001 and then also close our parentheses, huh? What if we did that? Yes, I imagine there is. Uh, Longer object length is not a variable of shorter object length. Mm. Maybe I can just not pass anything in. This, there's no way this is going to work. Oh, look at that. It didn't work. Uh, argument target question is missing with no default. Uh, doop, doop, doop. Mutate tidyverse get names of columns. Let's see if that'll work. Uh, mutate multiple columns. Mutate if fails. Hmm. Wait. I shouldn't be using mutate. I should be using apply. Apply over columns. Uh, column name as input. Uh, pass a data frame column name to a function. OK, that is what I'm looking to do on Stack Overflow. I'm trying to write, uh, da, 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 da. you can use the column name directly. There's no need to use substitute eval. You can even pass the desired function in as a parameter. Uh, I think I, okay. So I think what might work is to, Also, I don't think we're going to get to the machine learning today, but I would like to finish the data cleaning so we can actually do uh, other stuff today. That's not going to do nothing. All right. Uh, and then call names. All right. Uh, let's see if this will work. Uh, so call names gets the names of the columns, and what we want to do is we want to uh, mutate all. Uh, and then we're going to use our custom function, convert 
and to text using call names data subset. Uh, oh yes, also it would help if I use the correct function, huh? Object you guys of mode functions was not found. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, all right. Are there missing values in data original? <sighs> data, no data original, data original. I'm just looking for uh, missing characters. Hmm. R check how many missing. <sighs> yes, I do want to find the missing values. Thank you. No, I don't want to subscribe to your newsletter. Uh, oh, right. What I can do is is sum is dot na and then data original all right so we've got missing data um, but I think we made pretty good progress today um, we uh, to do convert answers to Answer key to text answers. Uh, so we did a lot today. Um, we got the uh, only the questions that we wanted, which was very straightforward. Um, we converted the um, uh, answer key that we had added by hand last turn. Uh, we developed a function to convert the answer key from what we'd added last year, last week. Friday, it was not that long ago, um, to uh, keys, you know, show you. Uh, so taking in uh, the number of the target question and then, did I ever change data original in here? No, excellent. Uh, and then uh, converting the numeric, so compared to Data original Q uh, So compared to this uh, list of numbers, instead now we have a list of that list of numbers converted to the corresponding words. So um, that works out, which is good. Uh, and now we just need to figure out how to apply it to each of our columns. Um, and I may just break down and use a for loop. Uh, even though it will be very space and memory inefficient because um, it's like it's kind of large but it's not that big it's a little less than 50,000 rows that's not too huge um, and uh, the other to do that I have is uh, pick strategy for missing data um, because the problem that I had here is that the function returned uh, my function returned 46,000 rows instead of 47,000 rows. Um, and that was due to trying to index with a uh, missing value, which is just zero. So all of the things that were missing were just dropped from our, um, our response, uh, which I believe I can demonstrate here. Uh, 
As you can see, the length of the original data is 47,000 and the length of the data that's been converted to text answers is 46,000 because some people didn't answer. So we'll need to figure out a strategy for that. Um, my big worry there is that for each person, they didn't answer a smattering of questions um, and that those overlap in such a way that we end up with very few data points, which can sometimes happen. Um, but we'll, we'll try it out. Um, hi, Lemmy Wemmy. I am sorry to inform you that you have come towards, towards the end of the stream. Uh, but I think we made pretty good progress today. Um, I was ridiculously optimistic and was like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll figure, well, you know. We'll, we'll definitely finish data cleaning today. Uh, and we made a solid start, but we still need to figure out basically what to do with the missing values. Once we have that sorted, we are good to go. Um, yeah, so we will do that on Friday and I'm like 70% confident we'll get to the machine learning part on Friday, um, which I think will be much straightforward, <laughs> much easier than this. Uh, Cigar says, uh, your way of awesome, way of uh, coding is awesome. <laughs> and in between your dancing and being funky, that's really interesting. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I tend to do like little, little bops when I'm thinking. Uh, it seems like we're writing code with you and we are uh, also getting the same problems with coding. It's a universal experience. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Um, I will see you on Friday, uh, same time, same channel. And then we will uh, continue working on this and hopefully finish our data cleaning. Uh, yeah, I think it's really just gonna be handling the missing data and then hopefully training our classifier and seeing how we do. All right, thanks so much for joining today, guys. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up here and I will see you on Friday. Bye.